Hey guys, RJ here. <clears throat> this is something that I am very proud of. You will note that you don't see me here. I'm not going to show you the video portion of me today. I'm having a very bad hair day and really don't like how I look this morning. So you're just going to get the video, uh, the uh, audio commentary. This is really, really going to be a powerful lesson. I would suggest you watch this lesson at least three or four times and really understand the implication and I may do a little uh, mini video broadcast workshop on this but it's really really important it has to do with the way suggestions work and the distinction between suggestions and commands now they do work hand in hand and I would strongly suggest that you use them together in fact I would say it's impossible to use only one without the other. But that said, let's get to this, and this is really, really powerful. I'm very, very happy that this person submitted this question. I want to continue to encourage you to submit your questions on the discussion board. There's no question too complex or too simple, too vague, or too clear. I'm happy to answer anything, and even if it's not a specific question, if you just want to make a report about a SARG you did, and then have me critique it, I'm happy to do that. Um, so, let's get right to it. His question is, can I talk about something completely innocent? Uh, can he talk about something completely innocent? Like going to the grocery store and embed lots of commands uh, in the right sequence, of course. Fascination, connection, attraction, lust. Is that enough to get the girl going? Let me just say a few things before I go further, delve deeper into this question and, and uh, unpack my answer. Um, he's talking about doing states in the right sequence. And I used to teach back prior to 1997 that you should always first create a state of fascination and then go for things like connection and then go for body feelings. I, of course, no longer teach that and haven't taught that, you know, in about 13 years. That sequence is powerful and effective for people who are already good trans subjects. Nowadays, whenever you do a walk-up, what I want you to do is first create an overall desire on her part to hear more of what you have to say. Create a state of welcome, create a state of overall curiosity, a state where she's intrigued by you. Before you go for the more hypnotic stuff like um, hypnotic commands that feel fascinated. And when you feel that connection, Debbie, you can realize that when you feel attraction, etc., etc., that's all good. I still want you to do that. But first, do some other things. That said, let's delve a little further into this. Um, yes, you certainly can insert commands anytime inside, inside of any conversation. So inside of any conversation, whether it's about books or her favorite movie, you can always insert commands like feel fascinated, experience a connection. Um, another way to do it is to use suggestions that are vague. Now let me draw a distinction between commands and suggestions. As you'll see in this illustration, I put commands in blue and suggestions in red. Commands involve a verb like feel attracted or experience horniness or think about sex or get horny. There's a, there's a strong verb inside of any kind of command. Feel, experience, think, get. Suggestions are more vague and they either describe overall conditions or they have a vague meaning that causes the person to go into a trance state and suggestions often contain um, ambiguities uh, like below and below, etc., etc. So let me give you some illustrations here. Here's an example, and again, the commands are in blue, the suggestion is in red. When a person starts to feel fascinated and get very aroused, it's interesting that sometimes I find there's something else you want. Now, feel fascinated, there's a strong verb there, feel, and then there's a condition, feel fascinated, or a feeling, get very aroused. When I say, there's something else you want, well, <laughs> that is designed to, to cause them to do an internal search, like, what is the something else they want? Want it in what way? Note something. The commands are specifically directing the listener's consciousness. They're telling him to feel fascinated, get horny. They're setting a specific direction for the listener's consciousness. The suggestion is far more vague. What is the something else that they want? And that vagueness, when you say there's something else you want, 
Notice also there's an I U shift. I say when I feel fascinated and feel a connection, that's when I realize there's something else you want. So there's also an I U shift there. But anyway, with this, uh, notice when I say there's something else you want, I'm not saying whether it's something sexual, something else in the store, something else. I'm not saying what that something else is. Nor I, nor am I saying when they want it or how they want it or how or when they'll discover what that is. Um, now what happens? When you're vague like this, it causes a momentary pause in ordinary consciousness. And the listener will actually do a search on the unconscious level to find the meaning that works for them. So you're actually accomplishing a couple of things here. You're causing them to pause in their consciousness and create something of a trance state. And then that trance state will deepen as they attempt to find the meaning of the words. This also makes them a lot more susceptible and responsive to any further commands that you do give them. Um, one thing I want you to notice is when you play with suggestions and you're vague, you will, will very often notice a momentary trance response right in the listener's face. As soon as you're vague, you will notice them. It's almost like a small little startle response where they almost look like you've stepped on their toe or they've just observed something that they don't understand. It's often quite visible. The more visible it is, the more you know you've got a really good responder. Okay, so here's my example of a great use of commands and suggestions for the supermarket. If you're when you're in the supermarket, or even if you're just talking about going shopping, even if you're not in the supermarket, you could say, you know, I was at the Vons or the Kroger's or whatever the supermarket chain is, the Tesco. I was at the supermarket the other day doing some shopping, and then you could just say this. Um, and you could also use this anywhere. You could use this in a clothing store, a shoe store. Notice that the commands are in blue, the suggestions are in red. So I say, you know, when I go to the store and you're looking for something that's on the list, sometimes I find there's something else you want, but you didn't put it on. So you just reach for it when you see it, like an impulse buy. That's why they have the candy and the gum and stuff right when you are checking out instead of embedded deep inside the store, like on your back shelf. So let's go through this. Here are the suggestions. Let me talk about the suggestions. They're vague. What is the something else she's looking for? Uh, looking for how and what way. What is the something else she wants? Look at some double meanings. When I say checking out, does that mean she's at the register buying her purchases? Or does it mean she's checking out of ordinary consciousness and going into hypnotic state? You've all heard that expression you see, you ever been talking to a friend of yours and suddenly their mind wanders and they're not listening and you say, hey, you just checked out for a minute. Where did you go? So notice that. And note the sexual suggestions invo involving the phonetic ambiguities. When I say embedded, deep inside, am I saying in bed, like in bed with me, or embedded, meaning st stuck, stuck deep, as well as deep inside and on your back. You know, on your back, shelf. Am I saying on the back shelf in the back of the store, or she's on her back? You see what I'm drawing, what I'm driving at here. One more point: um, the suggestions are vague. There's something else you want. There's something else you look, you're looking for. The reason they're going to be eventually, towards the end of the chain of suggestions, be interpreted in a sexual way, is because of the phonetic ambiguities, which are sexual. So when I say on your back, embedded, embedded deep inside. That is what's going to cause them to take those earlier suggestions, there's something else you want, and interpret it in a sexual way. This is the subject for a lot of discussion. I would like to see discussion on this on the uh, members board. Okay? Um, thanks a lot, and I'm looking forward to your feedback.